morning. Welcome to the January 11th, 2017 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. And uh, roll, please. Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Blaze? Mr. Hebert? Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Here. Thank you. Very good. Stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we'll uh, have a motion for approval of the minutes of December 14th. Motion to approve it is presented. Any uh, a second on that? I'll second. Any discussion? Thing on. Uh, this should be our voting member tonight. Can you take a vote? Mr. Richard is also. Mr. Richard, you're the second alternate, right? Yes. Yes. So you'll be voting tonight, too. Are we voting tonight? Yes. Okay. Oh. Would you like to vote, too? No, you just need a final vote on the minutes. He needs a final vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You need final vote on the minutes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I'll approve the minutes, yeah? That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, and we'll go right into the appeals. It's appeal number 2587. It's a variance appeal requested by David Haskell and Sir. Wait, 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 wait. Last week. <laughs> 2596, special exception uh, by Sean Kelly, 81 Home Grove. This is map R20, parcel 8A. Do we have a representative? Okay, take your microphone, state your name and address, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. My name is Phil LaFlam, uh, General Manager at the Doggy Cottage, representing Sean Kelly. Could you please your last name again, sir? LaFlam, L-A-F-L-A-M-M-E. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Sorry to mess you up. What's that? Sorry to mess you up. Well, that's okay. What, what, what would you like me to... Just uh, state your name and address and uh, your, business, your position. Yep. Uh, Phil LaFlam, General Manager of the Doggy Cottage. Uh, 81 Holmes Road in Scarborough. Thanks. You're welcome. And uh, just give us a brief overview of what you'd like to accomplish. Our primary accomplished we'd like to do is uh, put an addition on the front, basically an 8 foot by 20 foot long, 24 foot long uh, lobby. Uh, with the traffic flow we have, right now we just have access to one door that's in and out. By <coughs> building this lobby, we'd like to have an entrance door and an exit door to provide a, a more timely, fashionable drop-off and pick-up for customers uh, to prevent any overflow of traffic. Okay. And so the plan that we've got before us, this is new, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on you? Yeah. Uh, just a reminder that um, <coughs> the kennel um, animal daycare type operation in the rural farm district is a permitted use by special exception. Um, so the use that was there, uh, anytime that use is changed or expanded or enlarged in any way, requires um, the applicant to come back to the zoning board and get approval under that special exception um, for any change in, in that use. And that's what uh, Mr. LaFlam is here tonight to do. Um, there was also, uh, the reason you have a, a modified site plan is I requested from uh, Sean Kelly that I, I know that there had been some additional paving done out there. Um, and so we wanted to show where the original paving had stopped and what the additional paving was done. That's kind of where work stopped and passed the process up to go through the zoning board the way that it, it was supposed to be done. So that's why you have that updated plan. It's just to show you the extent of the new pavement and the new parking spaces that were created as mm -hmm. part of this project. Is this the new, is this the new piece? Or <coughs> it should be labeled right on there. I think I can see. Well, I don't know. I hope you can see. Because <laughs> um, I don't have one in front of me, but there is one up on the uh, on the screen. I'll see if I can blow that up a little bit for you. So, yeah. So the previous <coughs> of, of parking paved um, let's see, uh, let's 
So you can help yep. me out here. Right where that pole, you have the pole line? The pole was where the limit of the paved parking was, correct? correct? And you had six, seven, and eight basically as a, as a parking area. Right. Plus on the other side, you had um, nine, 10, and 11, which still exist. And for some reason, I was thinking that three and four and five were listed as, as uh, gravel. Correct. Yeah, but that's, that was more for the employee parking. Right. But now it's paved. Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, I see. I see what it is. They've paved down as far as three, four, and five, and then one and two remains graveled at this time. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. Or is that all no. paved? So this, this, this is all one, two, <laughs> yeah, right, right where well you have uh, your marker now. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, up. Two is all paved. That's all paved. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and that the before that is now grass. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that the only thing that the, the, the that's the, the the only difference is they broke out. I think the original site plan that was presented just showed the all the paved area. It showed the, the, the dashed lines that marked out where the previous limits were. All right. Thank you. And the, the addition itself is what I can see. The uh, opening, the, sort of the uh, the uh, open entrance with the cover, is that right? That is correct. And then the, with the two windows and the side door are. Yep. That's the extension. And that, that, that is the extension. That's how many feet? It's a little bit hard for me to read. <coughs> eight by twenty-four. Eight by twenty-four. Eight, eight, by, 24. eight by twenty-four. The setbacks are okay. We're just dealing with yeah. Mr. Wolf, if, if yes. okay, Mr. Chairman, you're also proposing at this time a future 35 by 48 covered pavilion. Is that correct? That is correct. In, in what's the time frame? Do you think for that? Is it within the next 12 months? I I would hope so. Okay. Yes. Uh, once the ground thaws, um, but that's a provide a covering for the outside animals. Um, Right now, we, you know, we are an off-leash, open facility, fresh air, four seasons. But it would be nice to provide a type of pavilion, uh, especially rainy days, uh, cold days, snowy days, where we can have that have that area for the dogs to stay dry. It's basically a, a posted, roofed structure. Correct. No walls. No walls. No walls. Okay, well, why don't we go through the standards of special exception? Sure. Give you a copy there. <coughs> What I'll do is I'll read in a question and you can just answer it. Okay, right. absolutely. Um, so the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Do you have your? I do not have that. It, it will not, no. Do you want to read this? If you just have. Oh, okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. If you could explain what, why it won't. If, uh, We're just creating a lobby with no additional features uh, that would um, cause any of this to uh, any sewage. That we do not. We're not adding any type of uh, uh, bathroom so facility. You're not looking for more area. You're not looking for larger area for animals. No, this is more for the customers, just to have a <laughs> lobby to come in and then an exit door. And uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. No, it will not. And if you could do me a favor, read that right in there. So that this is on uh, the tape is record, so we can find get that in there. Can you see all right? Yes. Right? Go ahead, just read that right in. That'd be great. The uh, by adding addition. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. By adding this addition to the front of the building, we see no change in additional pedestrian or vehicle or traffic conditions. The design of this particular addition and overhang will improve the current flow of pedestrian traffic in our parking lot. By expanding our lobby space and provide an overhang, the lobby space will be able to accommodate up to five to six clients at a time. The current space can only hold one to two clients and their pets at a time right now. Thank you. Next item. Those uses will not create uh, public safety problems, which would be sub substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire 
of police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, yes, this is correct. The only purpose for this expansion of our lobby is to provide a safe, more customer and dog friendly space and reduce pedestrian traffic in our parking lot. We see no need for an extra degree of fire or police protection. And the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies? Correct. Uh, we will have proper drainage, rain gutters, and downspouts to match the existing rain gutters on the current building. Um, there will be no additional plumbing or drainage installed in the proposed lobby extension. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Yes. Uh, the plans are compatible with existing uses. The purpose of the lobby expansion is only for customer convenience. Uh, our plans are to improve the visual impact by creating a more appropriate and modern entrance with very little impact. We were careful to design a space where our clients can enter from the front of the new addition and exit safely through the west side of the new addition, all without disturbing the existing side entrance of the home. And you're not in the shoreline zone. And you have the, uh, is the property owned by the, uh, the owner? Correct, it is. Sean Kelly. And the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet any standards of this section and comply with any uh, conditions imposed by the board uh, regarding this subsection? Yes. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing noises, that existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise or hours of operation? Uh, correct. There will be no changes about in hours of operation um, or generation of noise. Okay. When was this officially, originally approved? Um, I think that I noted. Oh, yeah, I did. I'm so thorough. <laughs> <laughs> it was originally approved in 2002. Uh, do you know of any complaints or any problems? Or I haven't been contacted by anyone. Mm -hmm. We did not. I'll open up the public. Nobody from the public wishes to speak. We'll close the public part. And we'll come back to uh, the board for discussion, comments, questions. It was pretty straightforward. Yeah, I have no problem with this. I, I think it. Uh, I think you've done a nice job keeping it looking like the rest of the building and it kind of fits right in, so I'm good with that. I'd like to just get some clarification as to procedures. Uh, all dogs are outside? Yeah, we, we have um, our yard space, basically our off-leash facility. So we have dogs that we play in the open outside. We do have a large mm -hmm. living room space that is currently there if it is extremely cold for one, um, or dogs that are older can come in. Uh, that way we play movies all day on the uh, TV for the dogs so they can, uh, so that, that sounds a home. Um, but our main goal right now is uh, just to have basically we have six to eight hours of playtime outside pending the weather. Yeah. Uh, in climate yeah. weather we do bring them in, you know, especially cold days, it's not safe for a dog to be out longer than a period of time, so we bring them in to warm up. That's when we have movie time. Um, this way we can just try to keep everyone happy, safe in the living room area, and have a good time as well and play. And then when they're warmed up and we're warmed up as employees, we can proceed back outside and let the dogs perform their tasks of having fun. On that subject of tasks uh, regarding the issue of um, uh, create unnecessary, unsanitary uh, conditions of sewage disposal emissions, uh, you're, that's not sewage there, is it? Mm -hmm. so what do you do with the waste? Uh, that is the, the, uh, the, as far as our, the waste, like Blow Brothers comes and takes care of that. Okay, is that what you do? Yeah, on a yearly basis, actually, yes. Yeah. Is it a container or just a. It's a, uh, the septic system. Yeah, the. Uh, oh, it's the pump. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, that's, I just wanted to refresh my memory on how it w all worked. And, uh, just You're talking about human waste, correct? No, no, oh, dog waste. Oh, dog waste. Okay, see, I gotta go back then. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, uh, every day we bag the, um, the dog's waste. It goes into a pine tree um, waste bin. Pine tree will come weekly and pick up the waste uh, and dispose of it for us. I was thinking you were tossing it down the toilet there. Yeah, I was like, geez, I, I, then I have to wait a minute. We're talking dogs. We don't make sure. Maybe they had all the dogs trained. I yeah. Now that would be impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
The noise wise, how, how, how do you handle the noise? The dogs get going, do they, do they in a pack like that? Do well, in a pack, you, you do have, you know, it's just their nature. I call it uh, talking to their people. Uh, but they like to communicate with each other. Um, basically, what we use is our voices. Um, we do have, uh, what we have is like birdhouse dog whistles. If there's an excessive amount of dog barking, we can turn on the dog. We call it the little birdhouses, but it's a dog whistle. It just prevents the barking from getting excessively too loud. Yeah. If dogs do continue to bark, which you do have some in packs that just like to run and bark, you have to respect the neighbors. We do the same with gray, but uh, we do have to bring them in just to kind of relieve that area because it does get noisy, um, and we don't want to cause any uh, you know disruption to anyone nearby. Yeah. Other questions? Is she there? Is it a motion? I'll just add one thing. There's one more step after the board makes its decision if they decide to approve. Um, then this has to go before the planning board for their site plan review because it is an expansion of the site. Too. So just wanted to make that. Thank you. Vote to approve, approve is submitted. Second on that? Second. Discussion on the motion. So just so I understand correctly, so we're approving this subject to the planning board's final. Is that because of the building structure? Sure. Building additions and there's parking, additional parking and paved area. And, and board the proposed be. future covered play area, yep. that has to be done within a year? If it's part of this approval, and that's why I asked about the time frame. Yep. Um, otherwise, if you decided to put that off two two years or something, you'd be back here again to ask for that. Yeah, so no, our goal is definitely yeah. within the 12-month period. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you, your clock starts from the time it's approved. It's approved until, but yes. I, believe that would be the I, I would believe it would be sooner than the later. Um, well, let, let's assume everything goes through smoothly. Um, let's assume, and I'm not, make, I, I'm not making this assumption, but... <laughs> If we painted the scenario that the, the zoning board approves, then it goes to planning board. It would probably be on the next agenda, and um, and they would have um, six months basically to start to get the, their permits and start construction on the entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, I think if this is approved as one project, that would get the project started. And if you wanted in the next six months to start the pavilion, you could do that, and it would. Your, oh. your approval would still be intact. Okay, excellent. You can you can uh, request in writing one one time only six month extension to the zoning board's approval if you need it. But you're going to have a planning board approval running concurrently too. So you, pr I, I think your expectation is you'll get started before and and probably finish the projects in that time frame. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? None. All in favor? Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Karen, would you like to? Yeah, I'll take that back. Thanks. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I didn't mean to almost yeah, paper cut. Occupation <laughs> <laughs> hazard. Concert get over with. Okay, everybody's ready. The uh, next appeal is appeal number 2594. It's a special exception application by uh, Angela Grover, 176 Broad Turn Road. It's just a map R25, parcel 1A. And as you might remember, this was tabled by the board for more information at the time, and <coughs> we've got some more information from um, Ms. Go, go through and explain. Okay. Uh, again, just so everybody that's listening might have a better understanding of what this is about and then okay. go into the issues that we may have specifically addressed. Okay. Okay. And I also have additional information for you, if I can give that to you. Sure. Okay. Um, and this is for a, um, I have a 20 by 20 um, detached garage that I want to use to display cabinets. <coughs> to be able to bring a client in to just view them. Hopefully they will place an order and, you know, go from there. Um, and I do have some copies of some additional information for you.
if, if you have an extra day. And I believe the, the biggest thing when the last time when we finished was the possible traffic issues because I thought that like a semi truck would have to be delivering it in front of Roger and that is not the case. There will be no semi trucks. Um, if it, when there is a delivery it will be just a small box truck, probably no bigger than a UPS or FedEx truck that would come in. Um, that's the first and the, thing. And the reason for that is did you just get a clarification or? I did, yes. Um, they do not go to residential areas with semis because there's no place to dock. There's yeah. no dock, you know, a place to, yeah. So, good to know. <laughs> um, so they probably use a truck similar to something like a Lowe's or a Home Depot style exactly. truck and they drive in your driveway. Yes, yeah, they back up right to the garage area yeah, and drop off. Um, and then what will you be using to transfer, uh, if, 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 it's, if you package it yourself and make it there, what will you use I have, to deliver it? Yes, I have a van and I have a utility trailer, so it has the hitch and just, I can use either the van <coughs> or both to deliver. Um, and then, I know you had questions on the assembly. Um, they are assembly. I, have some pictures attached that shows that, you know, what they do. There's, you know, the front, the sides, the back that's attached. That's that's the part I would do. So I just showed you pictures of exactly what they do attached. Um, and then the collection. Um, and then finally, um, a kitchen I did. So, and these were put together. And... Good job with the line of sight pictures. Thank you. And I believe that was the biggest um, questions you had was those was the traffic and the assembly part of it. So, so I provided you those pictures and <coughs> just giving the board a little bit of time to look through the picture, pictures. And you have to ask why you need to Real men carry measuring. <laughs> this looks like a pretty it's a prop. Pretty, looks like a pretty sturdy cabin. Yeah, I mean most of them are solid wood cabinets. They're, and I think that's how most of them come. Anyways, um, you buy them from um, a Lowe's or Home Depot. They still have to um, order them. They have to be put together, and then they're shipped. So it's pretty much the same process. All right, so why don't we continue? You've, uh, if you want, <coughs> read your letter right into the record if you'd like. I'm sorry? If you'd like to read the, your letter right into the record, that would be fine. Uh, My latest letter? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says, thank you for your comments and concerns on our first meeting in December for the use of the detached garage for the cabinet displays and allow me to return to clarify these. The 20 by 20 detached garage will be used as a showroom for display cabinets. Customers can view the display options available by appointment. There will be only one or two appointments daily that will last approximately one hour. This will, be, this will help customers identify the style and color of cabinets they would like and allow them to actually see them in person, which is my main objective for having this display. The cabinets will be shipped either directly to the customer or a storage facility to later be delivered or to my place um, or to the garage. Um, if there are large orders, I can also have them sent to a third-party location and then have them assembled, such as a warehouse, if it becomes too much. Um, 
if a delivery would need to be made to a house, the distributor informed me that they would use a small box truck for anything coming to a residential area. The truck would come right into the driveway and would not have any impact on traffic on the Broad Turn Road. The driveway is approximately 90 feet long with an additional paved area for two more vehicles to the left. We are on a 1.89 acre lot and the closest neighbors being at least a 500 feet minimum on the left and right of us, as well as no one directly in front of our location. Attached are pictures showing the driveway and street views, and those were my original um, pictures I had sent. Um, I hope this letter has clarified my intentions with the business and that it will not hinder the area in any negative way. And I ask that you grant me the ability to use a detached garage for display purposes for the business, and thank you for your time and consideration. Can the truck, back, if the truck comes in, can mm -hmm. they back up and then go out straight or they have to back in? Um, they can do it in many different ways. Um, UPS and FedEx both come in right into my driveway. Um, and I believe they've done both, um, such as pulling forward past my house on Broadshire and then backing right in, <clears throat> which would be fine. Or there's also the side driveway, which is plenty of room for a truck to pull in there and back around. Yeah, it looks like you have a little bit of a turnaround by the basketball hoop. That's correct. And right now you can park three vehicles there. Did we get any letters on this? Or? We did not. Uh -huh. So I'll open the public hearing again. There are no people, so we will close the public hearing park. Uh, board questions or comments on this section of this issue specifically, and then we'll come back and we'll go over the fire approval again. Uh, if it's something as we move forward. Actually, any of the comments she's got or the, uh, the clarifications of some of the things I asked for and some things other people did. No, I think the information you gave us tonight pretty much clears up at least the concerns okay. that I had right. in regard to what you were doing. Um, yeah. So thank you. This is yeah. very good. Thank you. But what were the dimensions on the proposed sunroom? I'm sorry? The sunroom, what were the dimensions on that? On the sunroom behind the house? Yeah, is that part of this project? No, it's not. And okay. actually it's gone. Oh. We're doing an addition back there. That's actually in the works right now. We just tore that down. Okay, so. thank you. Yeah. I, I can clarify that. <laughs> we just pulled that out of the file to give her something to show you as a site. Plan. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, the other location that you keep things, have you identified that location yet? It would be a storage unit. Um, there's a couple um, companies such as, um, I think right on US-1 is it Southern Storage, I believe, um, is who I contacted, and they would allow me to bring in whatever I needed. And even if a semi, well, not a semi-truck, but you know, larger uh, trucks could go in there to deliver things. So that's another option. And and you're aware it's 400 square feet, which is basically the size of your garage. You don't, you don't have a facilities in there now, do you? I'm sorry? You, do you have restroom facilities or anything? In no. There? no. No. And you're not planning that? No. The sign is you were planning on? Uh, Doing a small sign out front, yes. Whatever you allow. Maybe uh, six square feet, uh, depending on how far back it is. Yeah. Yeah, six, six square feet. So um, that's good. And then, uh, any other comments, questions, for us before we jump in? Yeah, I, I'm assuming you have no plans to put any storage containers on the property. No, everything is going to, everything that will fit inside the garage will go in the garage. If there's overflow, it will go into a storage unit. Okay. So there will be, you wouldn't see anything from when you're driving by anything different than right now. Everything would be hidden in the garage. Yes, the storage oh, yeah. unit's off site, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. And and. Uh, so I guess what's your what's your plan on the cabinets? Are you going to wrap them all the way around, or what? How are you going to? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering about how much space you're going to have left to do assembly. Okay, so right now we're going to do half the garage um, as a display area, um, and then the other half will be used for assembly. Um, if it becomes too much, I can add on and um, do an additional building on site for just assembly. Is that and Brian told me, right, that I could have up yeah, to another. Um, just to clarify, um, a detached accessory building can be 1,000 square feet for, for the special exception home occupation. Retail space is limited to 400 square feet. Okay. 
So she okay. could have 600 additional square feet. For Thank example. you. That's good to know. All right. Uh, just so you know, uh, I would have voted no for this last one. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I can't say anybody else, but you've done enough work for me to, to feel comfortable with what you're trying to accomplish, and you probably right. learned a little bit in the process. Yes, too. I did. I appreciate it, your comments, and so it's a learning experience. It is. To start, yeah. You know, self is tough. Yeah. Um, so why don't we start through the, uh, the, the standards. Okay. But do you have a copy of that? Story? I do, yes. And we'll do is we'll just take each one separately and vote separately. And the shoe you, you get to start. I'll set, I'll read in the, the proposed, proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. And if you just read in what you had written. Yeah, the display in the garage will not create any public safety problems. Um, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Oh, your I apologize. I was on the wrong one. Yes. Can we go back? I'm trying to find up their page. I apologize. Go back to A. Okay. The first one. Yeah, we're going to go back to A. Okay, I apologize. I'll read it again. The proposed use will not create unsanitary and unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Right. It is a um, cabin display in the detached garage and will not have any sewage disposal or other unhealthy conditions created. And proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic. No, the business will be by appointment only, will have only one additional car at the premises, so it will not create any unsafe traffic conditions. Uh, once a week, I believe that a truck will deliver, may come to deliver product. There is an adequate amount of parking as shown in pictures attached. And proposed use will not create un, un, uh, I'm sorry. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, <coughs> but require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Right. The display in the garage will not create any public safety problems. And the proposed use will not uh, result in sedimentation or erosion and have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Right. There will not be any sedimentation or erosion created or on water supplies from the display of the cabinets. And the proposed use will have, uh, be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to <coughs> physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Right. The use will be compatible with existing uses. It will be the existing garage 20 by 20 that will be used only to house the cabinet displays. And uh, you're not in the shoreline zone? No. Okay, good. And then we come to. Uh, you own the property? Yes. And uh, you have the financial abilities to... Yes. Um, and the proposed use will, not be co will be compatible with existing uses with respect to no the generation of noise and hours of operation. That's correct. Okay, the home occupation. Thank you so much. So the home occupation part I'll read in and we'll answer those also, okay? <coughs> the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal <coughs> building or within the building's accessory thereto. Right. Which would be the garage. Yeah. Uh, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Mm -hmm. And the square footage would kind of mandate that. Uh, no more than one person who is a resident of the dwelling uh, unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Right. At this point, you have no plan. No one. Right. Uh, exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with home occupation sign provisions in Section 12, sign regulations, subsection E, which is basically a, a two by three sign or a three by two sign or whatever. And I think you said last time you're going to put your name of the business and phone number or exactly. website. Exactly. Yes. Um, and other items like flags or lights or they not? No. Four feet, six feet to six feet. Okay. Okay. Uh, there shall be no exterior display or exterior storage of materials or 
and and no other in exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the neighborhood. Uh, this is prohibited. Uh, this provision shall not apply to storage of lobster traps. But it doesn't apply. Right, there will not be any. Uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, or glare. To the west. No. And traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to uh, create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. That's correct. And uh, in, addition, uh, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of, of employees mm -hmm. parking there and the turnaround. Uh, you're not using any more than 20% of the dwelling unit uh, flooring area, and you've done the other one, right? That's okay. And uh, we've got less than a thousand feet, and home occupations may include retail sales under the assumption of the following no more than 400 feet uh, square feet uh, can be used the sale of products is limited to products and pro articles produced assembled or processed on the premises <coughs> and seafood caught or harvested on the program and the other two don't apply but we're we're keying on the sale of the, the products is limited to products and articles produced assembled or process, and this, in this case, this would be assembled. Right. Okay, so that's the, uh, the provision that allows that, mm -hmm. uh, just to clarify on that issue. Uh, that I just want to confirm with the board on this specific item that we all agree that assembled in Section 10B of Section 9, we agree that is a legitimate, this, this project concept meets that definition of assembled based on what we believe. <coughs> Uh, I actually you? have a couple questions, For the, um, probably as a new member, but under the first requirement you were saying that the operation is done wholly in the building, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then now you're asking that the assembly is done strictly on the property, right? Um, yeah. Just going to make sure what I'm reading when I'm... Where you, you're taking the, Section B? The retail operations is within the building. No, so I guess what I'm trying well, to no, I guess. It's, it's just to clarify, whatever is being sold is produced, assembled, and what's the third one? Uh, or processed on the um, premises. Okay, so, when so it's, it's a broad net. If right. you were a gardener, you probably wouldn't grow your vegetables in the garage, but you'd grow them behind the garage in the garden. So they're on proposing. That that she'll go off site at some point. I mean, again, I'm, I just don't understand. Like when when part question. of her proposal is that yep. I will move off site if it gets to be too much, that's just to store them. That would be the um, overflow. Um, the overflow, overflow yes. I think, is what she's talking about. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. No, nope, that's correct. That's correct. Any overflow, and then I can bring them back to site to assemble. I think to clarify what I think you're coming at. Okay. Everything, anything that's on this location needs to be done inside that 400 square foot. Right. Unless they come back for expansion for the extra 600. Right. Yeah, I was, I was trying to understand how the storage unit plays in, what would be, how that would tie into the business. But it wouldn't be a problem with them having right. uh, another no. facility right. off site. Okay. If they chose. Right. Um, so that, back to the, the assembled part, I want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with assembling cabinets on site. And, uh, it doesn't mention display, which is interesting. It's possible to, uh, the sale of products is limited to product products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the, on the premises. And the total area devoted to retail sales limits 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building. But to me, there's a, a fine line there. I mean, we could get, you know, we could whittle that to the point where we cut our fingers. But to me, it really comes down to being some of it's going to be, it, this is not traditional retail sales. They're not coming in and buying a soda and leaving. They're not coming in and buying fruits and vegetables and leaving. It's really a display area where some product may or may not be assembled. And for my comfort level on 10 A and B, I feel that meets that standard. Does the rest of the board agree with that logic? Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess okay. just a comment across the board. Anybody you agree with that? So then just get a yes, no, I verbal agree. response on that from everybody. Sure, I agree with that. 
Are you okay with that? I said yes. Uh, okay, good. That that was just a, to me a fine point that I wanted to get off the off the table. And, and just to clarify what you've already done, I believe none of the stuff at the storage unit. You're not going to go over there and assemble anything over there. No, it's, it's just overflow. Right. right if at the location. for some reason there's overflow, I have that backup place to just have it at the time, and but then bring it back to assemble. But there would be no reason why she couldn't assemble that site. Yeah, there's really, I, I guess I'm okay. confused by your line of question. I'm <laughs> quite I was frankly, just trying to figure out I'm, I'm a little shifty myself. Yes. But I, I look at the business as sort of, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I look at the business as sort of a two-pronged business. It's Part of it is consultant or, mm -hmm. or kitchen design consultant because you're, you're showing them lines of cabinets and yeah. helping them pick out things mm -hmm. that people would want in their kitchens. Right. And so that's sort of one part of the business. Right. And in order to do that, I, as I see it, yeah. you're displaying yes. some of that product yes. to kind of help them get a feel for is it the type of product and the style that they want. Exactly. So that's kind of the consultant thing. Yeah, you're sort of selling you're selling the person on that brand, but you're not actually selling the cabinet at that point. Right. Then if they do decide that they want that cabinet, mm -hmm. then you have, and this is where I'm maybe not clear, mm -hmm. then you have the ability to order that in. You order that to, in. To that same garage, 20 by 20 garage, assemble those cabinets for them, mm -hmm. and load them into your vehicles and deliver them to, to the location. To the location. Sure, yep. The right. other thing that you could do, which would not be unlike someone who has a, a business where they sell something over the internet from a home office, which doesn't even have to come before you guys. <laughs> so you don't even have, you know, you could actually sell something over the internet, it goes directly to that person, it never touches your hand. Mm -hmm. It's still retail, but it's not retail on the, on the site. So. I'm I, I'm sort of not seeing. I'm just filling in a hole that I yeah. thought potentially could be there. Yeah. Strictly, the only reason why I did it is because assembled and um, uh, to, to me the no no I it's, it's, this this four I, I understand that yeah, yeah I understand that and, and that's I, the only reason why I, I just sort of I'm I'm just sort of looking at this more holistically I guess as sort of a consultant kind of. She's got two prongs. She's got the consultant kitchen design kind of concept going, and then she's got the ability to sell some cabinets on site or have them, if it's a large order and she can't fit it in there, they could be delivered right to the job site. Yeah. And somebody else can assemble them or she can assemble them there. She's Nothing's preventing her from going off site and working at what she does. Right. That's, 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 that's what I was getting at. It's just that it's just that what if she sells something on site, it has to be assembled on site. And uh, so I'm just going to read in this last two comments that you had put in uh, okay. on the clarification regarding the traffic issues. There will not be any tractor trailer deliveries or deliveries on the street. This is because there is no loading dock. When a delivery uh, needs to be made, it will be made with a small box truck style, very similar to UPS or FedEx truck that pulls into the driveway. And if the deliveries become too frequent, say more than two a week, I have a storage facility available to have deliveries sent to and store materials. I own a van, utility trailer to transport any product I need uh, need to. In assembly, I will be assembling the cabinets, sorry, the cabinetry, and attached are photos of actual assembly process. Also pictured are many of the solid wood cabinet styles available for sale. Additionally, the two uh, pictures show an actual kitchen completed by myself and my husband with the uh, cabinet line. Very attractive. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just go real quickly through the requirements of the special exception. Okay, we read some of that. Let's just go through. So, on the standards of the exception, I'm going to start down here with the two. Uh, proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions, the air, or water, or other aspects of the design or operations. And she's made it very clear that she's really not making any changes to the actual building or anything. I think she's answered it fine for me, uh, Mr. Tucker. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's real clear that there's there's no uh, no sewage, no water, so I, I, I would have to agree. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I I just had one question. I don't know where it falls into any of this. Everything's probably going to be shipped in packing material and stuff. Do you have sufficient place to put that for 
like the star, I'm sure it's probably coming in styrofoam and. Right. Yes, I would have a place to put that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you needed a small dumpster, that would be okay. Yeah. Make sure it was okay by these guys. She's answering the question, first question adequately, obviously because it doesn't really apply to too much of what she's doing. Okay. And the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Ms. Um, I think you've clarified very clearly okay. that this is not going to be an issue, I think. Sorry. Yes, again, it's, it's not a typical retail operation, so uh, we're not going to see a volume of traffic there. I would agree. She's got the turnaround in the driveway, and she's got another transportation where things can be taken to the storage unit. She can bring them back. She's got a huge delivery that just won't fit. She's fine. Clearly, a one customer at a time you know, appointment is fine. Uh, this is very, very clear. I mean, this was the issue that would have broken it for me, and I think you've done a good job uh, taking that concern off my plate. Thank you. Uh, the proposed use not create uh, public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by the existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire protection and police protection in the existing neighborhood. Uh, um, again, I mean, everything's going to be inside, not many changes, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. Yeah, I think uh, with the with the minimum traffic and, uh, and uh, number of people going in and out, I, I don't see any any changes. Yeah, I don't see anything directing public safety at all where everything's being done in, inside the building. Yeah, particularly with just a delivery a week out of FedEx size truck, that's fine. Uh, with the hammerhead up near the garage and the driveways, it looks plenty wide and no problem. The only thing I'd ask is snow, make sure you leave that for them so that they can make the turn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the process will not result in any sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. And she's not making any physical changes to the property, so no. Um, yeah, no impervious, uh, no impervious issues there. Yeah, I don't see anything that would affect any of those. You know. Okay. And I'm in the same place. I do have a question that kind of resolves back to see the last comment. How are you planning to keep the facility? Um, I have a pellet stove that I would like to hook up in there. It is in there. It's now. sitting in there right now, just not hooked up. Does it need to be done by the town? Does it need to be done by the department to check it? No, it just has to be installed to the manufacturer's guidelines. Okay. But the pellet stove can't, if, if the garage ever reverts back to a garage, <coughs> you can't have a pellet stove in there. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Go ahead. Uh, proposed use will not result in any sedimentation erosion. I have no problem with that. Proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood and in respect to the physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. I think you've provided adequate pictures and shown that really you're not changing anything to the property. It still looks pretty mm -hmm. all residential. Yes, I would agree. I don't see any changes to the physical uh, size. Yeah, the only potential change that she mentioned and she's already discussed with Brian is if she needs to expand. So. The sign's the only you know, no different there, I think. Okay. Um, then the last one, you're not in the Shoreland Zone, so it's, it's moot. Uh, so do I have a motion for approval? I think we have a couple more. Yes, more. So, this one, Paige. <coughs> I do have a question, just, well, maybe more information, just getting back to you on the wood stove. Okay. Um, it may not be a town thing, Okay. but you may want to check with your insurance carrier. Yes. Because okay. that's going to have to be on a separate flu, obviously. Uh, yes. And um, they are requiring either fire department or manufacturer specifications, so if you install it yourself, it still needs to be inspected by someone that's licensed to inspect them. Okay. Thank you. Just on your own personal. Yeah. Well, being I don't want to have you do it and then have your insurance company come out and say you right. can't have that there. Okay, thank you. And you said you own the property. Yes. And so there's no debate on that for the board. Now the applicant has technical and financial ability. Any questions on that from the board? No. So uh, compatible with the use of the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. <coughs> uh, those make very much noise. Um, <coughs> okay. So now I'm going to go back. I think we've got all this time, right? Okay, let's go to the board for a motion. 
Move to approve uh, as proposed. And uh, second. Okay. Discussion on the motion. Congratulations, you went from noted. Yes. My Thank opinion. you. That's what happened. <laughs> so, appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you for doing the extra work on that. Yeah, thank, mm -hmm. thank you for your okay. input. Yeah. You should have come back one more time because you get more advertising. Well, I know. Really <laughs> so well, there's a lot of work to do now. Next time you come back, wear a t shirt with your business name on it. I know. I know. A little flag. Yeah. Best of luck with you. I hope it works really well. No. Really? Yeah, I'm going to help you out. Can you? Uh, I do. You know, one more. And board talk. I had a question about something Brian said, just in general about the rules. I don't know. Um, Brian said that, I think he just said that if something is, if something is sold on site, it has to be assembled on site. If, it, if it's a home occupation with a retail component, yep. um, you're not on that page now. Uh, it's a retail component. Oh, yeah, it is on. It's in Section 9, right? This is right here, Brian. You have three options. <coughs> if there's a retail no. component on site, yeah. you know. <laughs> it has to be, yeah. <laughs> so it has to, if the sale of the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced. So vegetables, hand knit articles, okay. crafts, or assembled, or processed. So you could take something like Coke bottles and process them and make something out of them and sell sell them on site. So those are the three sausage. You, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe homemade venison sausage or something. So there's those three options. So in other words, you can't just order in bulk something off the internet and bring it into your house and sell it. You know what I mean? With knickknacks, retail. Right. Yeah. But you can sell your service. Uh, I was thinking about this. You know, you could be you could be someone who installs air conditioning. And, and maybe you could do the same thing. You could have a display of the air conditioners that you sell and install at your place of business. Somebody orders one, you you go just like a plumber, just like a, an electrician, you go to their site and install it. That's not really retail. You're not retailing them. You're, you're doing it as a consultant. For a third I think what triggered me was you, we said that we could she, she could install them at the properties, the cabinet. And I think that's where I was confused as yeah. well. She's well, selling yeah, it. it is. And I think yeah. that's where I was yeah. confused. It is. The, the, it, and it's and this is sort of the normal kind of thing I think that you would yeah. think about. So it does kind of, Mark's right. It's kind of on that fine line. But when you stop and think about it, that's where I kind of break it into two separate businesses. It's kind of a consulting business. Here's a here's a line of cabinetry in a style, and let me help you pick that out and design your kitchen for you in in some respects, and then. They can go to the site and install that cabinetry. The transaction happens somewhere in there, but she's in that case not physically selling that product at on the premise. Thank you. Same as same as a plumber is not physically installing a water heater for you at his premises. He's coming to your house to do it, but he could still have plumbing. plumbing. Yeah, he could he could have his plumbing business as a home occupation at his house in a garage, showing different fixtures. Kind of, people aren't necessarily going to walk in and buy that toilet that's on display, but they're going to order one to have it delivered at their house, and he's going to install. You know, that, that's how I look. I, I like your analogy. I, was I don't know if that makes sense to anybody yeah. else. But well, that's I, how I made sense of it. I just had to deal with that with my parents' thing, and so I know exactly what you mean. It, it, it's perfectly. Sit so down with somebody, design it out. I like that look. Think of a real think, think of a real estate broker um, who might want to run a real mm -hmm. realtor's mm -hmm. office out of his house. He's he's selling real estate, but he's not selling it at his house. He's providing a service. Oh. He's a service provider and a retailer. <laughs> <laughs> that I you know I, 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 I,
know, I don't know, Karen, if that makes sense. That's, that's how I was making sense of it. It does. I look at every single word very technically when I read it. So I'm just trying to understand it. You know, speaking of that, this is something I think is really important about the board that I think is important for different personalities and the importance of, of paying attention to people with different sets of skills than, than we have. I'm a manager sales component. I think 30,000 feet most of my time. My wife is granular. <coughs> so we get the full range of views. I, you guys all have different sets of skills to bring to the table. Karen has her sets of skills. And that's why it's so important that when we're all together, we listen and respect each other's dreams. Because even though I might not think of it, because I'm at 30,000 feet, anybody's flown an airplane, a small airplane, once you're a couple hundred feet off the ground, you don't realize the trees are high, they look flat. Um, yet somebody that's ground based, more like Karen, which I would say, and granular, she says, that, Well, that's a big, that's a big tree, and not, in the, I'll never see it. So that's, I just think, an important issue of why the board works and how it should work in person. And that is actually why Mark's wife does not allow him to fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or anybody flies okay. with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are going up in an airplane with him anytime <laughs> soon. I can get it. It's true. <laughs> so did I. So <laughs> Any other comments? Okay. Seeing none, the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. And no discussion. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.